This is concept three notes, and we're going to be talking about chemical equilibrium, and we're just going to be doing an overview of this. This can be a topic that can be a little bit confusing. We're going to do a model in class that I think is going to really help you visualize this and really understand it. But for our purposes, if you're my student, I just want you to understand this concept of equilibrium qualitatively. I want you to understand what it means, be able to make predictions about what you think would happen in a reaction based on what you're going to learn here. But in terms of quantitative things, we're not going to do that in my class. We're not going to be doing any calculations with K, the equilibrium constant. But I just want to preface this by if you're watching this video and you have a different teacher than me, your teacher may decide to dive deeper into this and have you do some of that quantitative stuff. But for our purposes in my class, we're just going to keep it qualitative because that's what's most important for me. I want you to understand this really, really well. And then if you go on to take AP Chemistry, we'll dive deeper into some of the math behind it. Okay, so... Reactions can be reversible given the conditions surrounding the reaction. So for example, sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas can react to make sulfur trioxide. That's a synthesis reaction, but it can also be reversed. Sulfur trioxide can decompose into sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas. Those are things that can happen. Now, what we see with equilibrium is that Equilibrium is when the forward, so maybe this top reaction and the reverse reaction, they're happening at the same rate in a system. So we're in one place and they're both happening at the same time and at the same speed. We would then say that this system is in equilibrium. And this is indicated by something called a double arrow. So instead of writing the reaction twice in both directions, we just write it in one direction, but then we use this little double arrow like this to represent that the reaction is in equilibrium and it's going both directions at the same rate. It's going forward and it's going in the reverse at the same rate. So our formal definition for this is it's a dynamic process, a back and forth, where there's, but overall, there's no net change occurring in the amount of reactants and products in the system. So there's going to be, overall, there's not going to be any visible change happening here. Another way of saying this is it's when the products and reactants are forming at the same rate. Um, another way of saying that is when you could say when reversible processes are occurring at the same rates. So consider a reaction in equilibrium. This would be like a general equation. A plus B, you know, can yield AB. AB can yield A plus B. Okay, it's in equilibrium. What that would mean is that the synthesis reaction of A plus B yielding AB is happening at the same rate, the same speed as the decomposition reaction of AB breaking down into A plus B. Now, the reason that this matters for our purposes is really so you can understand Le Chatelier's principle. And what this says is that when conditions change for a system in equilibrium, the system responds by reducing the effect of the change because it wants it to stay in equilibrium. Okay, so can go back and consider that reaction that we just talked about. So the forward reaction would be the synthesis reaction of A plus B yields AB. So if this reaction or direction is favored, if it's wanting to push this direction, um, what we would see over time is that the reactants, the concentration, that's an abbreviation for concentration is these brackets. We're going to see that a lot more in our next unit. Um, but the concentration would go down of the reactants and the products would be favored. So we'd start making more products, okay, if we're favoring the forward. The reverse reaction would be going this other direction. It'd be the decomposition reaction. If the reverse direction is favored, then we'd be making more products and making less reactants. The concentration would go down, okay? Now, in equilibrium though, it's gonna be going both directions, you know, the same exact rate. And so things that can change that or add stresses to our system are things like a change in concentration, temperature, and pressure. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to walk through each of these types of stressors or stresses on the system and talk about what would happen then to these reactions that are in equilibrium. Okay, so a real life example of this is the pH of your blood and when, and it's particularly when you're exercising. Okay, so for example... Aqueous carbonic acid, if it's in equilibrium, okay, it can make carbon dioxide and water, and then carbon dioxide and water can go the other direction and make carbonic acid in the body. Okay, so let's consider a stress added to this environment. When you're exercising, you're going to be adding CO2 to your blood, okay? So that stress is going to add this. Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, 
a reaction equilibrium is going to try to basically compensate for that stress. So if we're adding carbon dioxide this way, it's going to push the reaction this direction. So it's going to shift this direction to make more reactants, more carbonic acid to balance out with this. Now, let's say then over time the carbonic acid starts to build up in your bloodstream, so your blood becomes more acidic over time. In response then, your body is going to want to be removing that carbon dioxide from the bloodstream. So again, we have this reaction. We're going to start breathing faster and removing carbon dioxide. That's going to shift the reaction this direction. So we have to be able to look at these stressors and predict what will happen to the reaction over time. So we're going to, I'm going to give you a little summary chart to help you with this. So let's start first about concentration change, which is one of the factors that can affect a reaction in equilibrium. This is just the adding or removing of a reactant or product. So again, let's look at our general equation here. It's our synthesis and decomposition reaction that's in equilibrium. Okay, so we'll, I'll give you some examples of stresses and then what the response would be according to Le Chatelier's principle. So let's say we add reactant. It could be either A or B. We're going to have more of this. So the response then to compensate will be a forward reaction favorite. It's going to move this direction so it's going to make more product to balance out. Now let's consider the opposite. Let's say I add more product, A, B. Well, to balance it out, it's going to forward the it's going to favor the reverse reaction. It's going to shift this way and start making more reactant to balance out with how much product we have. Okay, now let's think about if I remove reactant, if I take away A and B, it's going to want to make more of that. So it's going to favor the reverse. If I remove product, A, B, it's going to want to make more of that to compensate. So it's going to favor the forward direction. So all you're doing here is if you're told a stress, you have to predict which direction will be favored, forward or reverse, reactants or products basically, in order to balance out and keep the reaction in equilibrium. Okay, another thing that can happen is a temperature change. So we're going to get into this way more in Unit 10, Thermochemistry, but two definitions to introduce you to now are exothermic and endothermic reactions. So an exothermic reaction is a reaction that overall, because all reactions have to take in some amount of energy to activate them, but overall there's gonna be a release in energy, specifically in the form of heat. So you will see heat as a product in the reaction. It can sometimes just say plus heat. Um, it can also have it in a heat unit like kilojoules that we see here, okay? so. But you're going to see heat as a product depicted in these types. So what we would see then is if we're adding heat, it would favor the reverse reaction. If we take away heat or we lower the temperature, it would favor the forward reaction. Endothermic are different. These are reactions that overall absorb heat. They take in heat. So you would see the reaction written maybe like this. Okay, where dinitrogen tetraoxide reacts, you know, we got to add heat to make this happen. And then it would, you know, react and form nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so in this situation, if I add heat, it would favor the forward reaction. If I remove heat, it would favor the reverse reaction. So again, you're doing the same exact thing as you were doing with concentration. You're just referring, looking at the heat or the temperature change in order to make your predictions according to Le Chatelier's principle. Now, the last factor we're going to look at is a little bit trickier because it's pressure. And this is only affecting gases because pressure changes in solids and liquids is so um, minimal that it doesn't really make a difference at all. So we're only going to look at things that affect gases. So if pressure gets increased, that means the reaction is going to want to favor whichever direction is going to make fewer gas molecules so that we can decrease that pressure. Okay. If the pressure is decreased, the reaction is going to favor the direction that's going to make more gas in order to, you know, compensate for that decrease in pressure. Now I put this picture here because pressure is inversely related to volume. So if I want to, if I, you know, if you've seen this picture, look at this, if I'm decreasing the volume, I'm increasing the pressure. If I let this up and I increase the volume, I'm going to decrease the pressure. So sometimes you're going to th see things referring to pressure. Sometimes you'll see them referring to volume and you know that these work together. And so you can still make predictions there. Okay, again, this is only going to be affecting gases. We're going to get into this so much more in Unit 7, States of Matter. But for now, I do want you to understand these basics here. So let's do examples. That will help with this. All right, let's look at calcium carbonate. Uh, if it's going in the forward direction, it's decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. If it's going in the reverse direction, um, you know, it's a synthesis reaction for calcium carbonate. Now, this reaction would be unaffected by a pressure change because there's only gas on one side. There's not gas on the other. And we said this is pressure changes are only applying to gases. So this one 
any change in pressure, increase or decrease, will not affect this reaction at equilibrium, okay? Now let's look at this reaction. We got gases on both sides here. So let's say we increase pressure. If we increase pressure, it's gonna favor the forward. If we decrease pressure, it will favor the reverse. Why? All right, look at the coefficients here. We have not gotten into moles yet. We're gonna cover that all in unit six stoichiometry. But I want you to see here, if we look at the coefficients, we have one plus three, that's four moles of gas on this side to two moles of gas on this side. So if I increase pressure, that's gonna favor the side that's gonna make less gas. So I would go towards the forward. If I decrease pressure, I'm gonna favor the side that's gonna make more gas, which is the four mole side. So I'm gonna favor the reverse. Now, here's another example here. Let's look at this reaction. It's gases, so pressure will make a difference, but here's the thing. One plus one makes two, and I've got a two on this side. They have the same moles of gas on either side, so it's unaffected as well because there's no direction that it would go that can make more or less gas because it would make the same either way. Okay, so that's something you're gonna kind of have to keep an eye out for. And we're gonna practice this. I don't want you to worry about that, but we're also gonna do a research activity that I think is gonna really help you see why this matters, and we're gonna look at ocean acidification. So again, don't get too overwhelmed by this. We're gonna do practice, and it's gonna make it help and make a lot of sense, I promise.